Hey y'all, it's your girl Stephanie of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, live at Black WrestleFest, and I am sitting here with an amazing wrestler and basically a jack of all trades, like a Mac of all trades, if you will, is what he called himself yesterday. Oh my gosh, I'm just so happy to meet him. This is Keith Mack. He's a wrestler and just, he does everything. So, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. You know, we're here at the first ever Black WrestleFest, having a great time. It's, it's crazy right now, like... You can't explain. Like, you've never seen an event like this, like, within our culture and within pro wrestling. So, this is amazing to be here. It's ma- nice to finally meet you for the first time yesterday. I, you, I helped her on her first trip to New York City, kind of explored the city a little bit. So, yeah, so it's, it's been a good time. I'm from North Carolina, but I used to live in Connecticut for a couple of years. So, I used to come to New York all the time. So, just like being back all over again. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy for me yesterday, like walking around in Brooklyn and everything, seeing New York for the first time, because this is probably like the one of the biggest trips I've ever taken. So he really did help me a, a lot. Shout out to Danny, who is over this event with Pretty Heels, and also Janelle from the HR, from Jobber Tears for helping me out in my Brooklyn journey as well. Like, I'm just so happy to be here. But we're here to talk about you, though. So when did you fall in love with wrestling, Keith? Uh, so me and wrestling, when I was a kid, we had a uh, we had a love hate relationship. So it's like when I was younger, I loved it like in the eighties, like with the Hogan, and, like, Macho Man, and whatnot. But then, kind of like in that end of the eighties, going into the nineties, I kind of fell off a little bit. So it was about maybe ninety five, ninety six is when I finally got back into it. Uh, I had my uncle, uh, so I would stay with him when my, he lived with my grandmother. And so when I stayed with him, my grandma would be like, "Watch him, come on, uh, it's six oh five watch this on TBS, which would be good old WCW Saturday night. And I got hooked on WCW because I lived in Virginia. I grew up in Virginia. So we were in that, in the Crockett territories, all that type of stuff back in the day. And then I still watch WWF. So right about the time I started getting back in love with wrestling is when the Attitude Era started to spark and whatnot. And it just grew my attention. And at that time, I was a huge Stone Cold Steve Austin mark. Like, I would like, every time I got in trouble in high school because I used to stun people in the hallways. Like, anybody is like in school suspension, what'd you do? I skipped class. What'd you do? Uh, I was disrupting class. What'd you do? Uh, I just stunned somebody in the hallway, just like, you know, middle finger, boom, steady, steady, you know, all day, every day. So, like, yeah, I was a, I was the black wrestling geek in my in my high school, and I was quite proud of it. And I even put there, like, in the future, people were like, you know what? You're going to end up being a wrestler. And sure enough, it's what I love to do. So... <laughs> It's been a journey, but like, yeah, my, my love's always been there. There's been so many people that have influenced me into who I've become today, so I can't help it. It's, 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 once you get that bite of the bug, it's in there. Yeah, it definitely hits you, and I feel that way too, except, you know, mine wasn't as off and on as your journey was, but at the same time, I completely get it. Like, once it's in you, it's in you, and it's hard to get it out. Yes. So, what would you say has been your best wrestling moment since you've gotten started in the business? Oh, I've had so many great moments. Um, so, uh, currently now, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but before that, I wrestled up here in the Northeast. This is where I got my start, and we started... Uh, I started, one of the promotions I worked for was Northeast Wrestling. And they gave me a good sending off when I was leaving to North Carolina. And then I got a call a couple months later. They were like, hey, we want to bring you back as a surprise for the Rumble. Like, nobody, like, only three people only knew in the company. So they basically flew me in. They hit me in a room for the whole entire, like, show up until it's time for me to come out. And then when I come through the curtain, when my number comes up, they hit that, and my number comes up. And the whole freaking place just pops super hard. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, this is amazing. This is, like, so much adrenaline filled. I'm like, if if wrestling was cocaine, this is what it feel like right now. <laughs> I'm like, ah! You know, it's so great. But it's just the genuine feeling of just knowing that I made that much impact on people's lives. That they're willing to come out there, you know, cheer for me, like, buy merch, whatever. And I appreciate everybody for, for that because, honestly... At the end of the day, I'm just a regular guy, but it means a lot because you people, kind of, like, a lot of people was podcasters, fans, whatever. You guys have always been supportive of me, and I, I appreciate that. And I always try to be supportive of everybody else and whatnot. That is so great, and I'm happy that you were able to have that moment to see all of your hard work sort of pay off in that way. And to see that people actually love you. Like, that's got to be, like, one of the most amazing discoveries in life is, like, when people actually are paying attention and actually care. So that's the thing. It's just my personality. Like, I've ne- I've been wrestling for almost about I want to say maybe going on 12, 13 years now, 
I have never ever been a heel because of that like people just love my personality because they're just like you just have this thing where it just like you rub off on people and the people just like want to get in and I wanted to do that with my character my character is basically just me it's not even really too much of a different character it's just me amplified a little bit as a party starter but at the same time like I try to implement everything from pop culture into into whatever I do in my matches you know doing what I can to make people laugh because that's one of my main things I, I when people try to put you in the category of like what you are I always tell people I'm kind of a comedic wrestler but I can also be, you know, a serious wrestler when, when need be. But I love doing comedic stuff because I got to figure out what's going to make people trigger, what's going to make people laugh. Uh, me and my tag team partner now, Stuart Snodgrass, uh, before we became a tag team, we had a match against each other, and we had a viral clip. We just thought of the dumbest thing. We are like, what's the dumbest thing we can do in this match? And at one point, I get up. I can't see Stuart anywhere, even though he's, like, right behind me. He's falling, falling. I'm asking the ref. I'm like, ref, where's Stuart go? And also, next thing I feel like a big. I'm like, Stu, are you trying to do the Vulcan neck grip? He's like, yeah. Everybody knows if you do the Vulcan neck grip, you got to do it right about here. He's like, like this? Yeah. And then I just pass out. It was basically a whole entire thing taken from Spaceballs. And we did that. And, you know, the crowd loved it. But we, what we didn't know was what was going to happen next was we posted that clip on Facebook. Within a week, we had 100,000 views. I went on my on my TikTok and posted it. Now we're up to like about one and a half million views <laughs> because people just like they loved how it intersected, you know, one of their favorite movies into wrestling. And that's what I try to do with whatever I end up doing is basically intersecting something that people can relate to, whether you're black, white, whatever your culture. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that call. That wasn't for me, for real. But, you know, that that's part of the, the beauty of wrestling. Like, it's so much creativity, so many windows that you can do. And, you know, some people are not going to like it. Some people are going to like it. I mean, it depends. So, uh, I just say, you know, I, I try to cater to everybody. Yeah, that was an amazing story. And I'm really glad that your character is basically you turned up to 11. And that, used, and that does work a lot of the time. So, what does it mean to you to be a black wrestler in this day and age, in this time, and also on this weekend, which is, of course, Juneteenth weekend? Uh, so, this has been, my journey has been, like, very, like, I didn't really look into the aspect of it when I first started into wrestling, but then I remember when I, since I was living in Connecticut time when I first started in Massachusetts, sometimes we go out to shows, and when we go to those shows, majority of the crowd is all white. But there will be those few black families there, and I would see the kids get super hyped because I remember that feeling when I was a kid, seeing somebody like me in the ring and like making the impact. When Ron Simmons won the world championship for the first time, it was a big moment for me. Like me and my uncle were like super hyped about it because it was like the first ever you know black champ champion in that modern era. And now we're you know in today's society where we got Bobby Lashley, Big E, Kofi Kingston becoming WWE uh, WWE champions and whatnot. It's a proud moment because of the fact that we can tell each and every last one of those black boys and girls, hey, it doesn't matter what people try to tell you, like, oh man, like only white people do whatever. No, like we're we're kind of taking over in this in this realm, and I I love every moment of it. I love the impact. Like every little girl I see come out with that ponytail, like, and they get super excited. That means a lot. Like the impact that is that's basically what I'm, I'm in this business about. Like the impact I can make, whether it relates to how they feel. I mean, it, there's no genuine feeling about it. So, I, like I said, it's 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 important for us. Uh, being here at Black Wrestle Fest, uh, I was a part of the first ever Black Wrestlers Matter show two years ago. I'm uh, still a huge supporter of them. All my people in the Midwest, shout out to everybody, Black Wrestlers Matter. They did good in February. Got another show coming up in September, so be sure to check them out. Uh, but yeah, I, and any, every other Black wrestler or you know Latino, Asian, no matter, everybody. I'm here to support everybody, and, and I love being here for that. Well, thank you so much for sitting and talking with me. It was great to meet you, and I wish you nothing but great success during this weekend and even after that point. Like, just thank you for um, sitting with me and talking with me here at Black WrestleFest. And this is your girl, Stephanie, logging out of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Of course, there's going to be more from this weekend, but as for right now, that's going to be it for me. More big, meaty man slapping me. That's what wrestling's about. That's why I watch wrestling as a kid. Slapping me. Well, I, well, you know, 
I'm just a girl, so you know, I don't. I'm probably not going to be slapping meat, but you know, it's your girl Stephanie at Black Wrestle Fest. It's we're live. <laughs>